Another thing, Gerard Brown just back from Daymount Park with my post-match reaction from Bohemians versus Finn Harps, which resulted in a 2 0 victory for Finn Harps. Mark Russell with both goals, giving the away side well as a massive victory in their quest to stay up in the Premier Division. And obviously, this result has huge significance on this season because that defeat for Bohemians now means Shamrock Rovers are champions for the first time since 2011. So, congratulations out there to all Shamrock Rovers fans. But that victory for Finn Harris means that they are guaranteed at least a relegation playoff. They've avoided automatic relegation, and that means Cork City. Commiserations out there for your fans, you've been relegated to the first division only three years after winning the double. So, so much to get through from tonight's game. The game itself, the first half I actually thought was quite even until Mark Russell's first goal on the stroke of half time. Both had a couple of good chances. Twice Keith Buckley played in Keith Ward. Ward was in good positions in both times, but he never really made a sufficient contact with the ball, so it never really troubled Mark McGinley in the Finn Harps goal. Harps' best chance in the first half was a volley from just outside the box from Tony McNamee. James Talbot got down really well to save it, but as we all know, he's a very flexible goalkeeper as well, able to produce um, some very, very top class saves. And it looked like the game was about to head to a scoreless draw at the break, which would have been fair on the balance of play. I thought both teams pretty much were even. Then a long throw in from Tony McNamee, ping ball in the ball's box, comes to Mark Russell, he sticks a foot out, puts it past James Talbot, and suddenly all the equations that we talked before the game of Rovers winning the league, Cork and Relegate, suddenly now look like a possibility. They definitely look very much on the card six minutes into the second half when Harps got their second goal, that man Russell again. Good cross in from substitute Adam Foley who came on for Carlos Sullivan who went off injured early on in the first half. It made its way to the other side of the box. There was Russell coming up from the left back position and a brilliant strike giving James Talbot a little chance in the ball's goal. Keith Long wasted no time in making changes and a response. He brought on four substitutions at the one time and as you would expect for a team of both quality and some of the exciting attacking players that they have, they were going to come out fighting and they were going to have their chances and throw everything at Finn Harps and that's exactly what they did. Mark McGinley made a double save, a brilliant double save first from Danny Grant and then the follow up from the substitute Evan Ferguson. Dave Webster, he made a brilliant clearance off the line as well tonight balls and you could tell as they were puffing and puffing and creating chances, dominate possession, dominate ball, trying to get back into the game while not much was happening. Frustration kicked in, left back Anton Bresen got sent off for a city kick out on Shane McElhenney. Finn Harps themselves also ended up with 10 men when Leo Donnell got sent off for a needless uh, challenge on James Finnerty. There was The ball was well in their own half. He was coming in from behind. They're tuning up five minutes ago. There's no need to make it, but he does. He's now out for three games. That's a blow for Finn Harps. So, you know, you add in the fact that Carlos Sullivan off injured. Players like that are going to be big losses for them now up over the coming weeks. But yeah, you have to say... Uh, Finn Harps, you know, they, they took their chances. They started off bright and lively. They always looked a bit of a threat. Like I said, they took their two chances in the game. Second half, they, they defended in general brilliantly and heroically. It's now three clean sheets in the last five. As for Bowles themselves, they'll be frustrated, they'll be disappointed. It was a rare night off the office. Um, I know obviously this result means Shamrock Rovers won the league, but I think that was kind of a net, but I didn't get the sense to get the feeling from Bowles that they, they felt like they let the title slip. That was gone. Like, the damage was probably done with them back-to-back -back defeats in September against the Rovers and Waterford. But they'll be disappointed because it would have been a chance to finish second in the league, keep the momentum they've got going over the last couple of weeks. But they've got a three-week break now before their last league game against Pats and then that crucial cup quarter-final home against Dundalk. So no doubt about it, Keith Long will use that break wisely and give it a chance to just kind of give the players a bit of a time off, come back fresh. It's just a little damn squid and overall what's been a brilliant season for them. As with Finn Harps, I suppose, yeah, they're, they're exactly where they want to be. Ali Horgan always said, if you offer them a relegation payoff at the start of the season, they'll take it. And it's brilliant and it's fantastic from their point of view. But, you know, maybe there's even a possibility they could even avoid that and stay up automatically altogether. They still got three league games left, nine points to pay for. They're all at home. I know there's a bit of a gap, five points to the likes of Derry, Pats and Shells, but you just never know. But they are in bonus territory. And like I said, even if they do end up in the relegation payoff, they know how to win that game. They've done it down through the years, so that won't bother them. But plenty of positive for them to take away from tonight's game. And they perform like they did again tonight and show the great same fight, heart and spirit that they've shown over the last couple of weeks. There's every chance they'll definitely be a Premier Division club next year. Just want to briefly touch on, obviously, the significance of what this result means for other teams. Congratulations to Shamrock Rovers. You are the champions. 
don't think anyone can dispute that. They have been the best team since the league began back in February. This has been coming for a while. They've been building nicely under Stephen Bradley over the last couple of years. The good runs in Europe, the cup success last year, they've really kicked on. You know, a lot of the focus and tension is on Jack Byrne with his Shamrock Rover team, but it's not just about him. Aaron Green, Graham Burke, they've got the goals this season. I think 12 between them. Aaron McIniff has chipped in with three as well. Ronan Finn provides so much experience in midfield. Gary O'Neill has really settled into that team this season. More experience and quality when you look through the back line. Lee Grace, Joey O'Brien, Roberto Lopez. It's fully deserved and like if it didn't happen tonight, it was only inevitable. Obviously, it's a long time, nine years, as I mentioned, since the last won the league. So look, it's obviously difficult times out there with all the lockdown restrictions and everything in place, social distancing. Look, I hope Shamrock Rovers fans are entitled to enjoy and celebrate tonight, but just hopefully do it in the right spirit and manner that you don't end up drawing negative attention to yourselves and to the club. Um, it ends up being in the news for all the wrong reasons that we've seen with other teams celebrating in various other sports. And obviously, of course, as well, even with like, Liverpool and Leeds as well. And then the other side of this is Cork City's relegation. It's hard to believe three years, as I mentioned, after they won the double. And you just think back to the last decade, they were always up there with Dundalk. They finally got over the line and won that league in 2017. A couple of cup successes as well in 16 and 17. A couple of runs in Europe. You know, the great Knights and the best hacking from Sweden in the Europa League. And look how quickly it's, it's just turned for them. I know last year, obviously, um, the start of the decline. With John Coffey's departure, they didn't even challenge for Europe. When new Neil Finn coming in this season, came in from the tail end of last season, it was going to be transition, but I don't think we ever thought it was going to end up in Cork being relegated. Um, hugely, hugely disappointing season. They can't really have many complaints. Two wins all season, only one since the league resumed. They've had crucial games over the last couple of weeks and they haven't done it, unfortunately. Um, it is disappointing for them. It's a tough time out there because they have a huge fan base there. There's a great pull down there in the south of Ireland and it's disappointing. But look, hopefully they'll, they'll bounce back. Um, I know there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding the club with ownership and everything else like that. And these are tough times, but look, they're a massive club and hopefully they won't be away for, for, for too long. But unfortunately, look, someone was going to have to go this season. Finn Harps went as well. It would be a disaster because they're such a great pull as well in the northwest of Ireland. But yeah, mad, mad night. Um, I didn't actually think, to be honest, at the start of the night that these two occasions were going to happen. But full credit to Finn Harps. Great results. And like I said, Produce that again over the coming weeks. There's a good chance he'll be playing the Premier Division next season. That's pretty much all I have for, for myself for tonight. Um, I hope everyone's keeping safe and well out there. And uh, I'll chat to you soon again in the near future.